Steven Stamkos is in Smashville, y'all. Your Locked On Predators, your daily podcast on the Nashville Predators, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to the Locked On Predators podcast, and thank you for making us your first listen of the day. We are your free daily Nashville Predators podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Want to kick off this Wednesday episode with a shout out to our Locked On Predheads. Those are our everyday listeners who tune in each and every weekday to talk Nashville Predators hockey with us. We appreciate your support, and we love that we get to spend a little bit of your day with you. I'm Ann Kimmel. I am a writer with Penalty Box Radio, and my friends, I have a partner in crime. You do. I'm Emma Lingen, and I'm the Predators site editor and reporter for the Hockey News. Yesterday was a big day in Smashville, y'all. Steven Stamkos was in the house. He arrived in the city, spent some time at Bridgestone Arena, and we got a chance to talk with him. He had some media availability. Emma and I were both there. On today's show, you're going to hear from Steven Stamkos himself, and Emma and I are going to share kind of our biggest takeaways from the conversations we had with him. Before we dive into all of that, do you want to let you know today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. As playoffs wind down, those sports stop sports and like we all want them to. But this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day all summer long. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. All right, Emma. So big day yesterday. Uh, Finally, it's real. It's not a hoax. The actual Steven Stamkos. (laughs) was in Nashville. He arrived in Nashville and uh, had some time to sit down and talk with Nashville Predators media and answer some questions. So the second time that we have gotten a chance to hear from him since all this news broke about not resigning in Tampa, resigning here with the Nashville Predators, a lot of great takeaways from the time that we had with Stamkos, a lot of great information to cover. The first thing I think we need to talk about, and I love that this was the first question, like, let's just get to it in in the media scrum. We're like, let's not waste any time. And I love that Steven Stamkos is like, hey, I'm willing to play center. I am willing to play wing. And I think collectively all in Nashville said, hallelujah and amen, because this opens up just a plethora of options for Nashville with with him being willing to do that. Yeah, shout out John Glennon of the Nashville Post for asking that question. Love (laughs) John Glennon. Yeah, we just, we're just cutting right to it. I love it. Love the efficiency. Um, Yeah, it definitely is something that, you know, we had all talked about and have all kind of speculated about is he has played center. It's been a while, but could he do it here? Because that would solve a lot of problems. And he certainly seems open to it. And he said that he had even talked about it briefly with Andrew Burnett, which uh, says at the very least says that we will probably see him, you know, taken to use a football term, taking some reps at center uh, in training camp, because I think that, um, you know, it's something part of it is like muscle memory, but you do have to Mm kind of get back into routine with, with certain things a little bit. So, um, but yeah, he seemed very open to it. Um, And yeah, I love that we got just straight to that question. Yeah. We're not here to mess around, Stephen Stamkos. We just want to. <laughs> so, yeah, we need shout out centers. To John we need centers. <laughs> Did we just get an $8 million center? We need to know. <laughs> but yeah, I thought it was really interesting, too. He was talking about, he mentioned just in passing, talking about face offs, which, of course, you know there's a rabbit hole and, and who's going to go down at that would be me y'all. And so I went back and was looking at face-offs and he has taken anywhere from over a thousand face-offs to some seasons, just around 400 face-offs, depending on, you know, where he's playing and all that kind of stuff. Um, last season, he took 637 face-offs and his face-off win percentage, 56%. Only two Nashville predators took more face-offs last season, you know, in Nashville, who do you think they are, Emma? I know you're going to know this because you're a genius. 
Who took more oh, face off for the Predators? It's got to be Ryan O'Reilly. It's got to be one of them. Yeah. Ryan O'Reilly took uh, 1,536. Okay. All righty then. <laughs> uh, Colton Sissons. Yes. yes. I knew you'd know because you're a Mr. freaking Mr. Potato Head. Mr. Potato Head in the circle. Only two Nashville Predators who took more face-offs. Both of them had a lower face-off win percentage than Steven Stamkos. Ryan O'Reilly, 53.9%. Colton Sissons, Mr. Potato Head himself, 52.6%. So love that you're adding somebody with that skill set who has had thousands of reps in some seasons in the face-off circle and who also, you know, is willing to say, hey, somebody else can take it. But I think that that's something I think may impact Nashville uh, in, in a really positive way. So I'm like, yeah, yep, we'll take one of those. We'll take a Steven Stamkos in the center. Yeah, no, winning faceoffs is huge. I mean, it, it kind of the – I noticed this a lot, and I, I don't have any numbers to support it, just from, from watching the Predators all of last season. It seemed like – there was a stretch for a while while they were kind of trying to figure things out where it's like if they did not win the opening face off, they mm. could not get set up in the zone to save their lives. And yes. it's like they had a plan and they were trying to execute the plan, but the plan only worked if they won the face off. And then if they don't win the face off, then the plan means nothing. So that that's kind of what it seemed like. Again, I don't have the numbers to support right. that, but it's it's something that was very evident with this team. So yeah, we'll take more uh, yeah. more face off wins, please. Yes. So I'm very excited about that. We also asked Steven Stamkos, like, what are some of the factors that went into your decision to sign with the Nashville Predators? And, you know, I thought he did a, a really great job of sort of laying out the things that were important to him, because let's face it, you know, it, it was a short span between when things weren't going to work out in Tampa Bay and when it was announced he was with Nashville. But you can bet that there were a lot of phone calls going to Steven Stamkos saying, hey, would you want to come here? Uh, and things that he talked about. I love that he talked about, look, I want to be on a team that can contend. And first of all, you just flatter in us. Like you just told us our butt don't look big. And we love Steven Stamkos <laughs> for that. Um, but yeah, it was important to him to be on a team where he can contend for another cup. And, and I think, you know, the odds just went up exponentially with the signings that Barry Trotz did. And that was something too that Stamkos talked about, like an aggressive GM and free agency. You all are are pretty serious about this. So good to hear, you know, good to hear that he considers this and what he saw last season signs of some, something good to come. Yeah. And I think something uh, he may have mentioned it uh, in the media availability yesterday, but I, I know he has said it before, you know, in, in other availabilities is that not just that this team's a contender or can, can, can be a contender, but is that that, this is an organization that wants to win and they're yes. trying to win. And that makes all the difference in the world. Um, so I think he recognizes, like you said, the effort, the aggressive strategy by Barry Trotz during the off season. I mean, that's all signs of a team that's saying, Hey, we want to win and we want to win right now. Yeah. And there's a hunger. I think we saw it last season. There's a hunger in that locker room for, Let's get back like this. This is serious. We are ready to do this. So I love that he saw that. He also pointed out, and yes, I would like a little kudos for this. He pointed out elite goaltending, elite defensemen, elite forwards. Y'all, may I just say again, I know you all wanted to trade UC Soros, but you trade UC Soros and friends. I don't think you get yourself a Steven Stamkos or a Jonathan Marcheso or a Brady Shea. So Shout out to UC Saros and to the organization for getting that done. Get it done. Yaroslav Askarov is not an elite goaltender. Not saying he never will be. Not before yet. Before everyone comes at right. me. Not yet. But he's just not there yet. Yeah. Yep. 
Stamkos also talked about the coach and the system, about this is an offensive-minded system, that he really likes that. We're like, welcome, please bring your offense. And talked about the family aspect, too, of Nashville, which I thought was really sweet. Talked about the schools, the neighborhoods. It's just a kind of a great place to raise your kids. So I feel like Nashville did a great job wooing Steven Stamkos uh, and, you know, Definitely a rough, a rough journey for him to get to Nashville, but let's see what he can do now that he is here. Coming up, we're going to talk some more about where Steven Stamkos could have the biggest impact on the Nashville Predators. It's an area of his game he talked quite a bit about yesterday with the media. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. Friends, we all love the sports. We love them so much. We want it to always be going on. But look, we know NHL playoffs all over. And we have fewer games to watch. The sports, that they just aren't sports and like we want them to anymore. But FanDuel is going to let you keep the sports going whenever you want. All you have to do is open the app and dream up bets anytime you're in the mood. Look, in our house, we are huge WNBA fans. There are some really exciting storylines heating up in Major League Baseball as well, and you can check out all of that action at FanDuel. And this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day all summer long. So head on over to FanDuel.com and start making the most out of your summer. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. All right, Emma, one area of his game that Steven Stamkos talked a lot about and that I think everybody was was secretly pretty excited to uh, to think about, he talked about the power play because my friend Steven Stamkos is who you want on your power play. So I'm going to play kind of some clips of what he had to say about the power play and what he feels like he is going to bring to Nashville when it comes to special teams. That's a part of the game that uh, I really enjoy. I've, you know, been in the same spot for, for a lot of years on the power play and, um, you know, intend to tend to be in that that position, but obviously for me, my strengths would certainly be um, my shot and, and quick release, and you know, trying to um, find openings there on, on the power play. I, when we were looking at you know potential teams, obviously Nashville fit that bill. You know, you look at the guy who's going to have the puck a lot and, and Roman Yossi up, up top. So um, looking forward to playing with with guys of, of his caliber, obviously. With Forsberg, O'Reilly, I mean, Marsha shows here now, um, Nyquist, you know, there's so many different combinations, I think, that can be thrown out there. You want to be jumping over the boards when you get a power play. You want to be the guy that goes out there and, and tries to help your team win and having that mentality of um, going out there. And if you're not scoring, at least you're creating some momentum. I'm, I'm a big believer in, in that as well. Emma, when you think about Steven Stamkos joining the Nashville Predators power play, what are your thoughts? I feel giddy. <laughs> I'm <laughs> I excited. Know, I know. <laughs> I'm like, this power play is, God willing, going to be so much more fun to watch than it was last year. Last year, a lot of the time, it felt like the Predators' power play was the penalty kill half the time. Yes. It was just like, and again, I at first it was very... You know, it's interesting because we've talked about this before. Andrew Brunette is known for the power play. Like, that's mm -hmm. supposed to be his thing. He completely transformed the one in New Jersey the year before he came to Nashville. And uh, just uh, wasn't, really, wasn't really clicking. Um, I will be honest. I think the power play finished, Nashville's power play finished 16th in the league, which is like literally right in the middle yeah. that's higher than I would have thought to be completely honest with you when yeah um, when I looked at it I thought the same thing yeah so uh it it can only help right I think that um you know he is he's coming Stamkos is coming from Tampa which has had the best power play in the league last year um and you know I, I hear a lot of arguments like well he doesn't have Nikita Kucherov now okay but he has Roman Yossi Thank you. So he has Roman Yossi. He has Ryan O'Reilly. He has Philip Forsberg. Like he's got plenty of weapons to, to work with here. And I think, you know, another thing 
that Stamkos said, I don't think it was in that clip, but he, he talking about the power play, he had talked about, you know, how important building chemistry is with having, you know, like he was very fortunate in Tampa to be part of the same unit that really did not change on the power play. And, you know, because again, best power play in the league, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So he was very, he talked about how he was very fortunate to, to work with the same guys on that unit. But I, it seemed like in Nashville, I mean, and and granted this comes with the territory of a new coach and a new system and kind of learning what you're working with here. But I think that was a big part of the problem um, this past season. You know, a lot of players, they they don't want to say that. They don't want to make excuses uh, for themselves. But I, I think that, you know, a lot of it was kind of, at least for the first half of this season, especially it was like, plugging in different pieces, different places where we, you know, what are we working with? What do we have here? And that can kind of, you know, that has an impact if, if you can't really develop the chemistry, um, you know, maybe even, like, I would say more so that has an impact on special teams than it does at five on five. Um, just because you're, it's a different strategy and a different, um, you know, different kind of play that you're working with, but also want to go back to something Barry Trotz said when we talked to him on the first day of free agency, which is that one of his main goals was to have guys on this team having defined roles on special teams. Right. So that way you're not throwing Riley, Riley, Ryan O'Reilly. It's the off season y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Riley O'Reilly. Uh, Riley you're, O'Reilly. <laughs> you're not throwing him out there for the penalty kill and the power play and, you know, giving him a ton of minutes at five on five. Like we need guys to have defined specialized roles. And, and that's not saying that no one ever can do both, but like ideally you want Colton Sissons on the penalty kill. You don't yeah. necessarily want him on your second power play unit. You can, like he's a decent net front guy to have on the second power play unit. But like now that you have all these other offensive weapons that have higher upside, like I would say that maybe, okay, let's, if we're going to specialize everybody, let's focus Sissons on the penalty kill. Let's focus O'Reilly on the power play, things like that. And so I think that, you know, that, signing Stamkos is a big piece of that. And that also ties into that, the importance of building chemistry, like he was talking about and being able to really get into a rhythm with your unit. Yeah. He had mentioned, you know, they kind of in Tampa Bay, you just knew where that player was going to be because they were always together. And that's one of the things where I think in, in a takeaway overall is some of this is going to take time. Yes. It is so exciting. This roster that Barry Trotz has constructed, but I think, it's going to take time to build that chemistry. It is really important that you get to a level where you anticipate, I know where this person is going to be on the power play. I know I can make this no look pass because I'm so used to this person landing right here. So I do think it's going to take some time, but it is really uh, such an exciting upside. And, you know, you go back and you look at, and and Stamkos mentioned this, you know, he's like special teams are really big, especially in the playoffs. You don't say, Stephen, let's take a look. Uh, In the Nashville series with Vancouver, you know, five of those playoff games were really close. One goal games, you know, one of them had an empty net. But Nashville went two for 22 on the power play in that series. You score a couple more power play goals and you have a very different postseason if you're Nashville. So I I think the power play, not, not saying it's the only thing, but like in, it's not saying it's the only thing that cost them that series against Vancouver, but in the playoffs, it's the best of the best. You need every competitive advantage you can get. And we saw special teams was where that, series was played like that's yeah. that's where the series was decided was was on special teams so i'm sure that that is something that barry trotz looked at and said huh maybe we should uh work on this a little bit 
we should get better. I have an idea. Let's go get Steve, Steven Stamkos who can really cash in. And also don't underestimate. He talks about, you know, his shot and his release, but this is also a guy who's just a really good playmaker at five on five and on special teams as well. So I think he is going to bring a lot to the power play as they build that chemistry that you were talking about, Emma. I do, but yeah, huge difference for the Nashville Predators if they can make that not a two minute rest for a guy on the opposing team. Just throwing it out there. Um, one of the other questions that Steven Stamkos was asked, and I love, like, he he's here to answer all the questions. Like, he, he didn't um, do any of those, like, soft landing platitudes, and, and this was definitely one of those answers. He was asked, hey, you've been signed for four years. What do you think this team can accomplish in that window? This is what Stamkos said when it comes to expectations for the Nashville Predators. Well, I mean, we want to win a Stanley Cup. That's that's why we we play the game. And I, I think some people are sometimes afraid to to say that, and and it heightens expectations. But at the end of the day, I've always been a big believer that you have to believe that you can do it in order to achieve it. The building blocks were here. You look at elite goaltending. You look at an elite defenseman. You look at elite forwards. They, they've checked those boxes off. And then the excitement of free agency and adding the players that, that were added here, the expectation will be to make the playoffs and, and go on a run. And, and I think that's a pretty fair assessment of what this group can accomplish. Can I just say, it was all I could do to sit there and not go, A freaking men, say it. Say you want to win a Stanley Cup. Just I... say it. I love when he said that because, you know, this is the the fun insider information you get from a former team employee. I happen to remember uh, last off season when a certain big name free agent forward signed uh, with the team under Barry Trotz's, you know, first free agency and came to Nashville for his media availability uh, the social media team asked him to film, you know, like a selfie video right. of himself saying like, hey, Smashville, whatever, you know, whatever he says. Um, and he signed off on his video with let's go win a cup. Mm. And they made him do it again with a different sign off. Not here for that. Because it's like, oh, that. that that's just going to get people excited. It's like, well, yeah, it should. Like, I mean, they're Hell not. Yes. They're not going to go out. I mean, even if. Yes. I, I'm not saying, look, looking at the Predators roster last year, did I think that they were going to win a cup? No. And they shouldn't have. But every individual player out there wants that. Like, they want. To, that's the goal. We're not going to go out here and say it's like, eh, I'm just got to make money. I'm just got to put the cash. It's got to put food on the table, you know? That's right. <laughs> um, and so I think that uh, when he said, I think some people are afraid to say it. I'm like, yes, because this organization for so long was afraid to say that it seemed like, um, and, and in case it wasn't clear that individual who had to redo his video was in fact, Stanley cup champion, Ryan O'Reilly. So yes. I think that, you know, it, it's, yeah, it's like, again, these signings sent the message, but like now we're saying like, this is just full sending the message. We are trying to win a Stanley cup. Now you cannot dance around that. And yes, every hockey player, every organization, every franchise, of course, the point is to win a Stanley cup. Of course, they all want to win a Stanley cup. It comes down to a lot of factors, but one of them is how hard are you willing to work? Of course, injuries play a part and timing plays a part and chemistry plays a part. There are so many components. That's why it's the hardest championship to win. But by God, kick it off by saying, I want to win a Stanley Cup. I want a Stanley Cup in Nashville. Ain't yep. nothing wrong with saying that. And here's the deal. 31 teams are not going to make that goal, but don't be afraid to say it. And when he said that, I was like, ooh, I'm going to keep my hands down on my side and not get Pentecostal here. But hell yes. Hell well, yes. Pente Pentecostal would be heaven's yes. But heaven's yes. yes. <laughs> Wait, and hey, that. we were, I was sitting right next to you. You did very well. Kept, I did. 
kept but it very, like, very professional. You don't, like you said, you don't, you hear people talk about it, but you don't hear people come out and say it like that. And I was like, Stephen Stamkos, put it out there. Put it out there. Yeah. I loved that. That was my favorite moment. Because I think some people, like a lot of people confuse the statement, we want to win a Stanley Cup with we are promising this fan base a Stanley Cup, you know, in no uncertain terms this year. And it's it's not that absolute. It's like, no, every single team that's out there is trying to win a Stanley Cup. That's why they play. And so it's like you're not promising anything, but what you are promising actually is that you are going to work hard and you are yeah. going to like push towards that goal and know that if a Stanley cup is not the result, then it's not for lack of effort. So amen. Amen. Yes. Love it. And, and I think, you know, you mentioned Ryan O'Reilly, that is a locker room that is filling with players who get it mm -hmm. and who are ready to say, we want to win a Stanley cup. And we're willing to do the work to get there. And it's, you know, it's a really exciting thing. And that's part of why you bring in Stephen Stamkos, because, you know, he knows he's done it. He's He's been there. He understands the process. So such a great moment. Coming up, we are going to talk about kind of the interesting quiz that Stephen Stamkos, by the way, passed with flying colors in the media. And we're going to give you kind of our final takeaways from talking with Stephen Stamkos. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends at Indeed. We are all driven by the search for better, but when it comes to hiring, the best way to search for a candidate isn't to search at all. Don't search, match with Indeed. If you need to hire, you need Indeed. Indeed is your matching and hiring platform with over 350 million global monthly visitors, according to Indeed data, and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. So you can ditch the busy work, use Indeed for scheduling, screening, and messaging so you can connect with candidates faster. And Indeed does not just help you hire faster. 93% of employers agree Indeed delivers the highest quality matches compared to other job sites, according to a recent Indeed survey. Leveraging over 140 million qualifications and preferences every day, Indeed's matching engine is constantly learning from your preferences, so the more you use Indeed, the better it gets. Join more than 3.5 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. Listeners of this show will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at Indeed.com slash locked on. Just go to Indeed.com slash locked on right now and support our show by saying you heard about Indeed on this podcast. Indeed.com slash locked on terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. All right, Emma, one of the more fun and I'm not going to lie, fascinating moments from the press conference yesterday came <laughs> compliments of our friend Alex Doherty from the Tennessee. And so apparently Stephen Stamkos gave an interview a couple of years ago talking about the fact that he has this uncanny ability to remember the goals that he scored. And friends, that's not just a few here and there. Stephen Stamkos pretty prolific goal scorer but he if you can kind of give him just a broad context said that I can remember you know how it how that goal happened so what does Alex do Alex goes all right well can you remember was it November 19th 2022 yep. Bridgestone Arena you scored a goal what can you tell us about that goal and Steven Stamkos just smiled and he said was that the overtime winner yeah it was a one-timer Corey Great Perry screen. Great <laughs> screen by Corey Perry, which I was like, how did he get out of my backpack? <laughs> but it, that rocked my world. This is a guy who scores so many goals, but he's like, yeah, if I, if I have just sort of like, if you kind of pinpoint a game, I can tell you how, how those goals were scored. You know, I think that's, I mean, it's crazy for regular people like us, but I think that that's actually so 
like it's more common than you would think just within professional sports like that that's how you remember with these guys like this is their career and their life like this is what they do and they take it so seriously and I think I think back to like even switching sports in baseball when I when I first started working in baseball I met David Eckstein former World Series MVP with the St. Louis Cardinals and I told him, you know, at the time that I met him, I was like, oh, yeah, like I grew up a Pittsburgh Pirates fan, same division as the Cardinals. I I saw you play. I think actually the first Pirates game that I went to in person, you were leading off the batting order for, for the Cardinals. And he was like, oh, yeah, was that the game where I had the missed double play or something like that? I was like, I was like, dude, I don't know. I was like eight. <laughs> I was like, I don't know. But like, I'm like, how? And again, like, has has That's been amazing. playing for so many years. And I think that so many of these guys are like that because they, you know, they take their craft so seriously. And so I, I mean, it's it's a fun like party trick. I feel like yeah. with Steven Stamkos. I want to just like run up to him in the locker room and be like, quick, <laughs> like now, October seventeenth. 2012 like, <laughs> and, That's right. just, and just see what he does but yeah I have to tell you like I realize this is reason number 837 why I am not a professional athlete because I remember things based on how I feel on how they make me feel so like movies I don't I can't quote dialogue, but I can tell you how a movie made me feel, which is great, except for the one time it majorly backfired. And I remembered that the comedy sketch from Burt Kreischer called The Machine. Have you ever seen The Machine? Oh, yes. I am the machine. I, I am the machine. I remember that is one. It was truly one of the funniest things I had ever seen in my life, but I don't remember details. So I said to my then 11 year old son, I have to show you the funniest thing. Oh my gosh. Well, Cause we were talking about comedians and y'all, I was about four minutes into the machine where I was like, I have done wrong. I have done wrong. <laughs> and, and to this day, my kids are like, mom's biggest parenting fail showed us the machine. <laughs> so, I am not Steven Stamkos, but I am fascinated by people who can do what he does. Yeah. Yeah. Very that impressive. Was, that was, that was not impressive. Like not mom of the year that day when my husband came home from work and I had to confess like, oh my gosh, I um, showed <laughs> Calvin the machine. <laughs> he was like, what have you done? Yeah. Oops. I'm no, Steven I mean, in Stamkos. your, def in your defense, it is very funny. So. It is so funny, but y'all, in case you are listening, it is not for <laughs> 11 or 12 year olds. It is not, it, it may, it, some parts of it are not even for me, but it's very funny. But so I was fascinated by that with Steven Stamkos. Overall, Emma, you just kind of looking at the opportunity we had to sit and, and talk with Steven Stamkos. What, what kind of is your overall takeaway? I mean, I think he's, he comes as advertised, you know, I think that he, is a pro he's ready to work and um you know i i think he's going to be a great addition to this team you know definitely i mean on the ice speaks for itself but off the ice as well i think that he's going to be a huge part of like you said that that group that just gets it hmm. yeah yeah very excited to hear from him obviously he has been through it it's got to still be very difficult for him, but it was really good to hear him talk about moving forward and his excitement with the Nashville Predators and friends, again, going to take time, but you just can't help but be excited for hockey when you know Steven Stamkos is going to be out there in a Predators jersey. And I will say it still looked weird. He, oh was, my wearing, gosh. he was wearing a Predators polo and, and even he said he was like, yeah, I'm not going to lie. It's, this is a little weird for me. Um, so it's still like, I'm still adjusting to the side of it, but yeah, it's going to take time, but it, it is, it's gonna, it's gonna be good. Uh, of course we are going to continue following Steven Stamkos through the off season into training camp and well into the season. We are also going to hear later today from Brady Shea and Scott Wedgwood. So we're going to talk about what they had to share on tomorrow's episode as well. So be sure you tune in to check that out. Before we sign off, though, Emma, let everyone know where can they find you and your work? 
You can find me on social media at Emma underscore Lingen, and you can find my work at the Hockey News. And you can find my work at Penalty Box Radio. You can find me on social media at Ann K underscore Mama on Ice. You can find the podcast on your favorite podcasting platform. Of course, we're on YouTube. Be sure you like and subscribe there. You can also join our Locked on Predators Insider Program and uh, reach out and talk with Emma and I about Nashville Predators hockey anytime you want. We'd love for you to join us. You can get details in the description and in our bio as well. That is going to do it for this webinar. Wednesday episode of the Locked On Predators podcast. Thank you for making us your first listen of the day. We are going to be back tomorrow with an all new episode. We'll see you then.